close to the speed of light is a kind of elixir of life. Because time slows down close to the speed of light, special relativity provides us with a means of going to the stars. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to day 47 of Llamascapes, the speed run to Max Cape on an RS3 Iron Man. We're starting off today with everyone's favorite mini game slash D&D, whatever you want to call it, Temple Trekking. We're here to get to there, to get to 594, because it is a requirement for the elite Mauritania Diaries, which I will want to have in order to get my prayer up. Uh, the reason that we're doing this now instead of later is because I already plan on training my prayer some at Vyres. Of course, other valuable things you get from Temple Trekking are the bowstring from all of the reward tokens, because that would be my obvious choice. Uh, the constructor's outfit, which you get from leveling up, um, you know, various people. Uh, you end up getting cast familiars at the end, which are pretty useless. But along the way, you get the woodcutting outfit alongside the constructor's outfit. Also fairly nice it saves you you know five percent of your woodcutting grind overall i know that we're just getting into all the progress but i wanted to cut in future llama here to let everyone know that look i've taken some feedback into account a number of people have asked me for this sort of thing over the years and i think it's finally time that we get it going so I have made a community Discord server. I'm going to have the link pinned down below in the comments. I'm going to start throwing it in every description box. Feel free to join. There is a Q&A page I will be posting, you know, if I go live on Twitch, if and when I do that in the future, if I put a new video up, I'll have room for guides, both my own and other really useful guides that I find online, all sorts of things. Uh, so just feel free to join, come hang out, you know, toss some questions in there if you have any for me. And uh, yeah, I'd love for you to be a part of it. Well, we've been doing this for maybe 15 minutes. Uh, just got our first lumberjack encounter. Didn't get the first piece of the outfit, but hey, it's still, uh, you know, pretty fast. Already up to four reward tokens, uh, soon to be five. Oh, and this is kind of a obscure tip, but if you're going to need to do this at some point anyway... Um, you do run into the gas event pretty often, and it turns out they drop bitter cat mushroom spores. You actually need a fair number of these to reactivate certain fairy rings, uh, to rebuild Edgeville, uh, do that mini quest. So it's it's nice that they drop these. Uh, I think you need like four in total to actually you need to actually complete four growths of them in total. So probably good to have like you know six or seven. And I kind of forgot uh, to actually check which follower I was doing, but this is the first one you want to get to, to max level, to 99, because of their reward. Unlimited Druid Pouch. It's called the Ouroboros Pouch. It is awesome. It can be added to your tool belt, I believe. Um, yeah, super useful. Just do this one first, trust me. Something else worth noting is that uh, the type of event or like the difficulty of event that you choose to do does matter. The first hard event for this follower got them level one to seven and now to, uh, I don't actually know. <laughs> so that was a, a two step, uh, trek. Um, but the first for another of my followers only got them level one to four and it was easy. So it actually does matter a fair bit whether or not you choose to do hard. Uh, easier do tend to be faster though, if you're just trying to jet through these. And because I actually do want to pick up the Talon Beast charms that drop from the Nail Beast event, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and claim all my rewards. I'm going to be putting all of these into Bowstring. Um, there are a bunch of different options. I think the Pure Essence is also pretty decent if you don't have, you know, different bosses you can kill for it. I may claim some Pure Essence through this. Uh, but for the time being, just Bowstrings because it's pretty good. It's faster than just about any other source uh, aside from the Rare Drop Table. So... Yeah, definitely, definitely want to claim some of these. And in case you don't know, the reason that you take these Talon Beast charms is because they're a summoning familiar that you can make for very little number of shards. I think it might literally just be one shard plus a Crimson Charm plus this. It's like over a thousand XP. Oh, and I didn't mention it earlier, but this event is also something that I was looking out for, something that I was planning around. 
by weapon swapping on this event, and I realize now that I need a blister with staff to actually do this properly, um, I will be able to gather fire corpses that you need for various achievements and for upgrading the Sun Spear. Uh, so that's another part of why I want to do this now rather than later. Well, I overmade by like 50 Druid Pouch charges, but there we go. Can acquire, acquire uh, add tool belt, Ouroboros pouch. Incredibly useful. Incredibly useful. Well, this is my fifth or sixth Lumberjack encounter, and I don't have a single piece yet. What is this, and why are they dropping lean snail meat? <sighs> Did Jagex break the zombies? Oh, and would you look at that? Settled game to say hi. I was just chatting with some people in the Soul Obelisk friends chat, and I wanted to, uh, you know, provide a little tip to people that may not know, but you can get four scarab pops for every single one of these that appear so you click when it does <laughs> i didn't quite do it right uh so you have to cycle between left clicking and right clicking uh so whenever you click it first to, to step on it you'll see it uh, animation change and it'll freeze when that happens you right click burst again then you have to do that one more time i'm just not quite getting the timing right <laughs> but uh let me see if i can do it and i will edit that in I do normally just go for two or three because I'm a little lazy and it's not like there, you know, <laughs> are limited number of scarab spawns. Uh, but anyway, there is a Slayer level. ba -bam, Level 79. Uh, so my current Slayer goal is actually 84. I don't think I've brought this up just yet. Uh, but I plan to completely skip the Death Talisman uh, list in Morning Zen Part 2 and go straight for, uh, you know, boosting with a wilder pie. Now, wilder pie requires level 90 cooking to make. So, yeah, I'm going to grind to 85 cooking using the dairy churn. Then I'm going to also get my slayer up alongside it to at least 84. Use a plus 6 boost on my slayer and a plus 5 boost on my cooking to get the required skill levels. Uh, and then just pop that uh, death talisman from some dark beasts. And skip all that grind. Uh, hopefully that can get done pretty soon. And as soon as that gets done and I get the other requirements that I have remaining for Quest Cape, uh, I'm just going to go straight for Quest Cape. So I am now like nine events dry at this point, And I've gotten to the point where I'm scouting every single route to try and find more of these bridges to repair. It's going to be the most fixed up this swamp has ever been because I want my lumberjack set. I was informed by one of my lovely viewers. It turns out you can fill cooking urns with this churning method. I have lost so much XP by not doing this so far. I can't believe I just took people's comments for granted and thought that it didn't work, but I still have about 1.2 million to go, which gets shrunk to about 1 million to go. Uh, basically four or five hours left here. Um, something I'm just going to do, like, when I'm eating, I literally have a pizza in front of me right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, good PSA here. Keep this in mind if you do decide to do this method. This is pretty important. So I've been using this time while I've been churning to do a little bit of research, and I've just learned, turns out archaeology is really, really slow, so I am perfectly okay putting things like Tears of Gothics and Quest Rewards into it now. Um... Yeah, it's it's just not slow. I don't really want to get into it, but it's bad. Uh, it's probably going to be the second worst skill behind like crafting. Came to do my one last rune sphere, but Yellow Wizard is calling and he's right here. So boom, there is level seventy-seven RC blood rune crafting unlocked. The best XP method for a long while. I think after that, Souls is a little bit better. Um, but I think it might require more pure essence, so I think in the end I might end up doing more bloods. Not totally sure. I'll figure it out once I'm in the 90s, though. Thought I'd come back to Simona for some late night slayer, and she does reward me one cancel later. Got the desert strike worms, and something I forgot to do last time, preferring doesn't mean extending the same way that it does in old school, so yeah, let's actually extend it to 112 kills, and let's see what happens. And... I just realized that I could have waited to do that until I only had one kill left. Again, but doing it now saves you from potentially making a mistake later. 
And here is something that I haven't really used before in RS3. I believe it's the equivalent of the bracelet of slaughter from old school. It's called Headhunter's Thrill. And wearing this bracelet gives you a chance that your Slayer target does not count towards your task on kill, but will still award experience. The important thing here is that it's like an extra extension to my extended task, right? Um, I don't actually know what the chance is. I'm just going to carry a few of these on me. Uh, and you know, Hey, if it, if it pops off then go for it, it'll give me like 25 extra kills per bracelet. I thought they might be useful at some point in the future. So I went ahead and just made like eight of them. Um, yeah, hopefully they work out pretty well. Well, that bracelet didn't trigger nearly as often as I would hope it would only got six extra kills out of that entire task, but another task of 118 done, I guess with, uh, Hey, we did get a beam for a spirit Ruby. I think I'm coming to the realization that if I get offered something like this, Terror Dogs, which you can burn through 37 of in like five minutes, I should probably just take it, right? It It's going to save me time in the end. Sorry, did I say five minutes? I meant like three beginning to end <laughs> with just a Dragon Halberd. That's, that's kind of nuts. Yeah, 223.30 was the first kill and 226 was the last one. And this time for magic task number 250, I didn't even have to skip, which is incredible. I'm going to save my points this time and extend towards the end uh, because I just remembered that there's a right click instant teleport to Simona, which is really nice. Uh, but it is almost 3 a.m. So I'm going to sleep. Oh, man, the contentment was starting to set in. But never fear, it always comes through. There's the focus sight, and there's the Slayer Helm done. To start off day 48, let's see just how many Desert Strike Worms I killed. 323. You know, that is a fair enough number to end on. Oh yeah. And I think as soon as I finish this task, I might end up having enough points for the, for the Helm. Uh, at least I'll be very close. Well, now that we've finished our Slayer Helm grind, then we can move on to Curadel for our Slayer tasks. Uh, let's see what she gives me. Dust Devils aren't great, so I think I am going to skip this. Um, I know that I'm, you know, don't quite have enough Slayer points for the uh, for the Helm, but there, Hellhounds, that is quick enough. I will take care of that in just a second after I repair the Fairy Ring. Well, I got an Abbey Spectre task, and I didn't want to you know, roll past it because that feels like a waste of herbs, uh, even though it is terrible XP. I got the Ghost Hunter goggles, though. Uh, that's cool. Another piece. Uh, I guess that's the first piece of that outfit. So that's something. So I got this offering from Curadel. Uh, still working on my Slayer, of course. I'm like 985k away from my goal. Um, yeah, I'm considering taking this Greater Demons here just to do more Krill. I know the actual kills per hour isn't that great, but you do get a 2k XP drop every kill. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I may end up taking it, and you'll see <laughs> if I do or not. Otherwise, I just take the Grot Worms and I burn through it, right? I took a look at the different task weightings, the different task offerings from Duradel, and decided to take the Greater Demon task because of just how much XP it's worth. Um, I ended up hitting the exact lowest roll, which is really funny uh, in terms of greater demons it's like 150 to 250 i had exactly 150 um but yeah we'll we'll be taking these preferring them possibly extending them just because of how much xp they're worth you know i i really just i'm here for the slayer xp if i get a decent number of kills per hour and I've, i can survive at krill then it's just great slayer xp per hour on top of the other drops that i could be getting so yeah it's a win-win and here we are, got my two Augmenters, got my Garb, my Gown. First thing I want is Venom Blood to avoid the poison entirely. And I think this is the best option for me. At least it's really cheap. I have a lot of evasive components. You get them from the insulated boots. There we go. Perfect. Turtling 2, Venom Blood. Uh, it's really common, but, you know, hey, Venom Blood, that's what I'm looking for. And I'd also like to get a Biting 2 just to slightly increase my DPS. So there's a pretty good chance I hit it with uh, five direct components. Let's see. <clears throat> Biting too cautious isn't great. Um, it'll work, I guess, but I'm gonna repeat, see if I just get biting two. There we go. Uh, so I'll get rid of the cautious 
And yeah, that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, I guess I only have to augment one piece for now. Um, so I don't really know what else I'd throw in the second one. Let me take a look at the wiki. Oh, right. I do want to get scavenging off of my weapon to increase my DPS with a different uh, DPS perk. So I guess I can go ahead and do this. Since I do have a lot of precious components. Perfect. Oh, right. I guess because I'm going to be doing a demon task, I may as well go for demon slayer. So uh, there we go. Demon slayer no mobile. Perfect. Well, this is going to be our setup. Uh, as soon as the Sun Spear is done leveling, I am going to change out that scavenging for an equilibrium, ideally. Uh, I might try to get a better precise as well. Um, but aside from that, yeah, this is what we got going. So we have our Garb, Rocking Demon Slayer Mobile, Turtling 2, Venom Blood, uh, and then our Gown, Biting 2, Scavenging 2. I feel like this is the one that's most likely to change once I get Ancient Invention for a Scavenging 4 and a... You know, higher biting, probably. Um, so given that I have a second gown sitting in the bank, uh, yeah, it just makes sense that this one could be disassembled at some point uh, and, and replaced. So um, yeah, that's what we're rocking with. You can see I only have about three hours, 40 minutes left uh, with my 72,000 charge, because this is a pretty high intensity charge setup. Um, but that's okay. We do have, uh, you know, Radiant Wisps unlocked, which give us a fair amount of energy. And if I go get Cursed Energies, it, it gathers pretty quick as well. Time to see how this does. Oh, the last thing I forgot, and I'm going to try a, a session or try a, uh, an instance without it just to see how I do. Um, but I actually have 67 summoning now, so I can go and uh, make myself a bunyip pouch. And that'll help me sustain a fair bit. I think it heals quite a bit of HP every single minute. Um, and considering Krill is probably going to be just borderline, you know, pushing me out, causing me to use a little bit of food, uh, that might help me sustain for quite a while. I also do plan to use my uh, vampirism uh, aura whenever I get in there, so that'll probably help me last quite a while too. Well, these kills are going really fast. 34 and 37 second kills so far, but I just realized that I forgot something quite valuable. The Enhanced Excalibur. So not only did I forget the Bunyip for healing, I forgot the Enhanced Excalibur, but it looks like Vampirism will take care of me just fine. So given the sheer pace of these kills, I think this might actually be the fastest Slayer XP I have available right now. Uh, and that's making me really curious about Armadil as well. Um, so if you can tell I've done like 40 KC at this point, uh, about half my task. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's only taken about 45 minutes. So it's, that's really solid Slayer XP per hour. It's like 70, 80 K maybe. Um, then a lot of the other tasks at my level are just pretty garbage. So I think I'm just going to uh, maybe prefer Raider Demons even, uh, but I'd also like to give uh, Arma a try to try and unlock Devotion and Sacrifice and get some of the pieces of the Armadillo equipment. I've also been a little bad. I've already passed level 10 on my Sun Sphere and didn't immediately leave to disassemble it. Um, I think I'll be okay. I, I don't think I have the components for another uh, Augmenter right now, though, so I may end up siphoning this for the time being. Oh, I just wanted to throw this in here that my current fastest kill time at Krill is actually kind of nuts. It's like 23 seconds. I have... I have no idea how I'm doing that without overloads, without, you know, a Drin Pots even. Th that's just nuts. And immediately after that clip, I get my first drop in a while. Steam Battle Staff. All right. That is a, uh, that's a unique at least. And our second drop is an Epigy. I have no idea how rare this is. Please no one tell me. Back-to-back -back Epigies? Really? And there we have it, last kill of the hour. Went from 150 kills needed to 39, so uh, I don't know exactly how many kills that was. I know I started at 49 krill, so let's see what we're up to. Yeah, 102. That That's a pretty solid hour, right? <laughs> like, 53 kills in an hour with the tier 78 Sun Sphere? That's nice. Well, I canceled the Tazar task that she gave me, but here's Aviancy's. Uh, so let's try it out. And if it goes pretty well, then I think I'll end up actually preferring this one. I didn't prefer the Greater Demons, uh, but yeah, I think I'll prefer this one because there is uh, there are a few more pieces of the ranged equipment that I'd like to have. 
And with this one last cream cheese, we are finally done churning here. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I might come back in the future, but at least we have the 85 gold that I had in mind. That is 85, well, for the wild pie, but uh, 85 plus a 5 boost for the wilder pie. Just went and killed some DKs so that I could get a new Reaper assignment. And would you look at that? ABNC task, Criara. It's lining up perfectly. So first attempt was just a four kill trip. Uh, I'm going to have to get kill count again. And, you know, kill count always means that you're getting more AVNC kills. But that's okay. Uh, you know, the, the tasks are going to be decent. Eventually, I will get better gear. I'll get soul split. Uh, and it'll be fine. Um, but honestly, just the XP from the AVNCs is pretty comparable to most other Slayer mobs at my level. And considering how packed this area is, it's not a bad task. So I think I will prefer it. And there we have it, the beautiful 300 task streak. I'm probably going to keep point boosting until like 350-ish, maybe, just to get a few more unlocks. But after that point, it is just straight grinding. Uh, hopefully, though, I hit a few more greater demon and AVNZ tasks, and I can just burn through my Slayer Girl without having to worry about it. And I feel like it's time. We have 800 points. Let us go ahead and learn how to make a Slayer helmet. Boom. And there we have it, the Slayer Helmet, and I'm not sure if I can, yeah, <laughs> full Slayer Helmet. There we go, that's exactly what I was wondering. Beautiful. Literally the next task, task number 310, AVNCs, and I could extend it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to, but I could. And just as I'm starting to finish up kill count, oh yeah, I got the Devotion ability. Finally, it gets its rightful place back on my hotbar, and yeah, that's going to help with these trips a fair bit, I think. Oh, I did not end up seeing the other unlock, but there is Sacrifice, which is a great basic ability. Um, I actually love keeping this on my hotbar, but <laughs> I don't think I remember ever fitting it on the magic hotbar. Hmm. Oh, now that's what I'm talking about. 243 Greater Demons. That is nuts. Uh, and if I prefer that... Oh my word. 291. That is that is 145 Krill, more or less. Oh, we're, we're going to be there a while. So if I assume that I'm only able to get 135 kills here... Uh, because, you know, sometimes the minion respawns... You, you always uh, underestimate a little bit. It's about 300,000 Slayer XP for this task alone. And my gold is 684,000 away. So, yeah, let's knock out 50% of that. Okay, I feel real dumb. Um, my Sun Spear has 70,000 XP. I don't have augmented item max level 15 yet. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I do have to pay the 600k. <laughs> <laughs> I was avoiding disassembling it just because I didn't want to pay the 600k, but I guess I'm glad I have another augmenter. Uh, yeah, it's time to, uh, to get uh, precise and equilibrium on this at least. Oh, I should at least show you the XP drop, right? Uh, I'm going to disassemble it as a magic just to get some powerful components. You can actually switch the style to get different uh, uh, materials, or different components if you want, but I think powerful are, are pretty good. So there we go. Uh, 55 now. All right, well, we finally got another drop. That is a Hood of Subjugation picked up. Uh, as soon as we can mount our uh, Slayer Helm on uh, Anachronia, that is an upgrade. So that's nice. And would you look at that? Another dupe, the Steam Battle Staff, and a War Priest Cloak on the same drop. Uh, I leave the cloak so that I can always just disassemble it whenever I do roll War Priest. Um, I'm pretty sure this is literally the next kill, but there's a Zami Spear. <laughs> okay, so we're missing the gloves, the boots, and the pet. On to day 49, and I am a dumbass. I came to tank a pet with an orb, but we got there. Let's see the loot. You know, that is not bad. And there's the second kill. That was a 328, which wasn't bad. You know, I always love the shark rock tail drop, so I can't really complain about that. And that's a nice little chunk of GP. And there's another task done at Krill. 
Uh, I actually did one extra kill because I didn't notice that I finished up. Um, making pretty good money, and I think that's really one of the benefits here, is that not only is the Slayer XP slightly better than anything else I can get right now, to be honest, uh, it's also pretty good money. I think I've made two mil over that task. And would you look at that, I actually wanted to do about an hour of Vires, and I got it on a task so I can get some XP for it. That is going on the prefer list, for sure. Well, I did a little bit more than just the task required. I stayed here for my full aura. Uh, actually, I stayed here for about 50 minutes. Got, uh, yeah, the full four stack, uh, full stack of 499 fire corpses that I need to burn. Uh, so I think I'm going to go and do all of the um, Shades of Morton that I need to make up the sacred oil and just burn these straight away. We out here doing Shades of Morton to get our sacred oil to burn the 500 corpses. I just learned, or I guess I just relearned, that the Mauritania Legs 3 gives you 10% bonus rewards for temple trekking. Uh, so that's something that I should get before finishing temple trekking. <laughs> it looks like the only thing I'm really missing for that is... Yeah, I think I just need one piece of Barrow's gear, so that's pretty easy to get. And there we have it. I believe that is 500 of these three-dosed boys taken care of. I think it only took about two hours, and it is pretty much just fill your inventory, click on the thing, walk away for about three minutes. Uh, yeah, so let's deposit this, deposit this, exactly 500. Then we only need to burn 499, so let's get one of these out of here. Well, not sure how a few of my keys disappeared, but I believe this is 500 done, unless I somehow lost corpses and the and the logs, but yeah, no. There is 500. Uh, I probably won't pop, in, pop open all the keys just yet. Oh, wait, no. Never mind. This is crazy fast. Okay. <laughs> Had to use up two more skips. Even skipped a gargoyle task because I'm committed to getting more greater demons, and this time I think we actually extend it. Uh, I'm gonna do some math real quick. It looks like extending will probably end up giving me 40 more kills, which will get me very, very close to that goal. Not quite there, but uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. And uh, stacking up KC ended up getting the Ghost Hunter body, so that's cool. Uh, I think that's one of the two pieces that you can actually augment and take into the wilderness for revs later. Oh, there we go. Now it's just the gloves missing. Pick up those boots of subjugation and immediately equip the upgrade. Well, that was a very long trip. I actually don't remember where I started. I think it was 194 kills or something. Uh, no, I think it was like 160 kills. Uh, yeah, <laughs> 200 kill trip pretty solid. Only reason I left is because my Sun Spear hit level 10. Alright, I've got some fun stuff coming in. So the Sun Spear, I went into Zami with it like uh, 1k item XP or something, and it's level 10. So let's DA that, and boom! Level 60 Invention, level 60 in all skills broadcast, which is always fun, and then we research this immediately. And now that we've researched that, we just pop Siphon, and pop Siphon for a beautiful amount of XP, straight to level 63 now. And the really, really nice thing about level 60 invention is that you unlock the first machine's auto disassembler. That's what I'm talking about. It's time to go throw like 10,000 maple logs in there, watch them disappear. Uh, also, I do need to do some energy collecting because I'm starting to run out of charges in my back. This also gives me access to the Monkey Mind Control Helmet from the Goblin Tech Tree. Uh, this is another reason why you want to research the Goblin Tech Tree first, is it just has good stuff in it. Uh, but I happen to have enough currency to go ahead and unlock this, uh, so I think I can do that research now. And what that gives you is a Demon Butler that is free and a little bit faster, I believe. Uh, so, very useful. And here we have it, the Auto Disassembler made. I threw a few charges in here, got a few more for my pack, and yeah, we're just gonna dump in as many logs as we can. Well, uh, there's a second ward. Okay. 
Well, there's a nice level 85, so now I can finally do uh, the quest for the Asylum Surgeon's Ring. Broken Home. <laughs> I can finally comfortably do that and just get the Surgeon's Ring right away. And there's the big level I've been going for, 84 Slayer. So now we can make a Wilder Pie, we can boost, slay some Dark Beasts, and we should be able to get it, honestly, on the first, uh, first bite of the first pie get that death talisman oh man well we got some repeat gloves ah <laughs> uh, well that's unfortunate i guess but hey we're still pretty lucky here i can't i can't complain oh hey there's my first godsword shard as well godsword shard three and that is probably the last kill here in god wars dungeon for a while task complete um, yeah, I don't know what to do now, at least with regards to Slayer. Um, not sure if I'm going to change up my, my list or not, but at least I have some time to, uh, <laughs> to make that decision. Oh, I completely made a mistake. The gloves are the new one. I have full subjugation. I thought I needed boots for some reason. Oh, wow. That's nuts. I actually cannot believe 375 full subjugation with an extra gown, two repeats here and here, just missing the hilt and the pet. That's nuts. Uh, also 13 capes is <laughs> really funny to look at. Yeah, I have uh, 13 components here. And there we finally have it starting day seven, uh, day 50 off <laughs> with 75 prayer. Got my words mixed around, but that's all right. That is all of the requirements I need for Plague's End, including the optional requirement of 84 Slayer, so I don't have to do that stupid list for the Talisman. Before we hop right into questing, of course, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the boosting that I need to do and slaying of Dark Beast, but also we can come to Brunt and we can talk about something else. I don't remember the option, but I have XP to claim from Blood Runs Deep. Yeah, I'm going to go slowly through this and make sure I actually pick prayer this time because I remember misclicking on my Road to Comp series. Okay, and this is the third reward, prayer. There we go. 78 prayer straight away. That is nice. And we're here going to claim one more reward, Ancient Lamps, and this is going into prayer as well. The third Ancient Lamp. I plan to put into archaeology. I know, I've talked about how it messes up the scaling or whatever, but at the same time, archaeology is stupidly slow, and 100k XP is like an hour and a half to two hours at level 75. So, yeah, I'm going to save that time. But there's 100k prayer. Boom. Very, very close to 79. And, of course, I need 80 to keep going for quest cape. So, about 190k left to go for that. And we're getting started really early today, making a ton of clips. But something nice that some of y'all might not know is Brown Spicy Stew will boost Divination, or can boost Divination, I should say. That's not what I wanted. And there we have it. Okay, so I've boosted over 90 Divination. And you might be wondering, how is this relevant? Well, Cursed Energy will let you make the next tier of energy. It's based solely on your Divination level. So whenever I go gather Cursed Energy, uh, instead of just gathering Radiant, because it's faster, well, I can now turn it straight into Luminous, which is even better than Radiant for uh, making Divine Charges. So this is something I'm going to do once I hit level 90, is do a plus 5 boost to make Incandescence early. Um, but Divination levels up fast enough that it's not that big of a deal, uh, and you only need to make Divine Charge every now and again. It's not like a constant thing, uh, but it is quite nice to have... Uh, you know, a nice little tool in your back pocket like this. Unfortunately, the difference between uh, Radiant and Luminous is only like 50 energy per Divine Charge, but it, it kind of adds up right 350 instead of 400. You get an extra every like eight or so. So in order to make a Wilder Pie like I am going to, you need Crushed Dragonstone and Raw Wild Pie and a cooking level of 90. So Orange Spicy Stew, first try. 87, not quite good enough. Let's go for another boost. Okay, so I hit a plus six boost 
Uh, it only took, I think, six stews or seven stews in total. Uh, and I only need a plus five, but I thought I would go ahead and log as soon as I saw it. And then, bam, make those wilder pies. Then we got to go to Lumbridge and do some cooking. All right, let's see how this goes. Oh, they're not burning. That is that is nice. And there's actually a chance that I think I get a free uh, wilder pie through my Seuss Chef toque. So maybe that'll happen. Uh, but regardless, this is still eight. And you get two bites apiece. So that is a lot of boost, actually. You get six minutes of boost per bite. So that's 12 minutes of boost per pie. <laughs> so 96 minutes of a plus six layer boost. Um, yeah. That's definitely going to get me a death talisman. And there's Morning's End, part one complete. Time to move on to everyone's dreaded Morning's End, part two. Whoever said this quest was difficult. It's that easy to get the death talisman. It took all of two minutes. And a second one for good measure, like two kills later. Okay, perfect. And here we are at the death altar. Only took about 35 minutes to actually get through the full puzzle. Uh, I know that's maybe a little slow, but it felt real fast, given that I'm using Mobile and Bladed Dive. Morning's End Part 2 complete for 20k Agility XP. 375 quest point milestone, which is nice. We got more to do than talk to May. That quest and light puzzle was much faster, but there's within the light done. Time for the last one. Well, that was much easier than I remember, at least the final fight, but uh, there's the big city unlocked and all of the beautiful lamps, which I can just spam click. Yeah, yeah, 500k XP drop for just one level. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I guess it's time to enter the city, and I think that is through the library door. And now that we're here in Prif, there are two or three very important things to do. Number one is to talk along Golden Rocks, uh, because as soon as you get here, you can start claiming them, which is quite nice. Uh, and then for us specifically, we're going to be looking out for Ithil Hours and Heffen Hours. Every Ithil Hour, I'm going to come and do Harps, and every Heffen Hour, I'm going to go and do Agility uh, and hope that I will be able to get to, I believe, 83 or 84 crafting is the goal to be able to boost to make the grand defense potion for the light within, blah, blah, blah. And uh, then I need to do Heffen Hours to get 83 agility for another quest requirement uh, and hopefully push to 80 prayer alongside that. So I just took a quick look at the last requirements I have for quest cape, and that is one level for smithing, the agility and prayer requirements that I laid out, herblore is done, one smithing level, or one thieving level, which is just 50k away, the crafting grind that I laid out, slayer is done, fire making needs to get to 82, woodcutting needs to get to 80, construction needs to get to 81. That's it. I'm like 20 levels away. <laughs> it's incredible. Outside of Quest Cape, uh, I do want to continue harping here regardless, uh, even if this might be slower than some other crafting methods, which I don't believe it is. I think it just gives different XP compared to gem mining. Um, yeah, so coming and staying here on Ithil Hours is very good because there is a good chunk of harmonic dust that I need to gather up. Uh, I believe the total is 14,000 for my current goal, and that is... Yeah, that's that's quite a bit of harmonic dust, considering I've gotten 260 in like 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, that's quite a lot of AFKing. And here we are at an unfamiliar site, but as it turns out, uh, I've been working on something that is the medium or hard Mauritania Diaries. It's the last thing I have left for the easy, medium, and hard diaries. <sighs> Let's see uh, how long it takes to get a drop. And there we have it, our first piece of Barrow's gear, Torag's plate legs. Uh, let's just teleport straight back up to Barrow's and finish these hard tasks off. It is pretty straightforward. All you got to do is walk in and wear it. That's it, right? Right? Come on. Oh, I had to take them back off and put them back on. Well, <laughs> there we go. Hard task set complete.
And there we have it. I've completed the hard task. Give me those legs three. And these lamps are interesting, right? Because I've been talking about how bad archaeology is to train. But I do have a few quests left to go. A few things left for the quest cape. I think I am just going to put these into archaeology, though. Give myself a little bit of a boost. Because I will need 74 archaeology for the quest coming out in just a few days. So there we have it. There's 65 done. Yesterday and today's traveling merchants were both very nice. Today's being Unstable Aerodone and a weekly D&D token, another one to bank. Uh, and yesterday's being just an Unstable Aerodone, uh, which puts me at 5487 rune span points. However, I already have three pieces of the Master Rune Crafter outfit. So time to go get the fourth piece. Uh, it's nice to have that sorted out. Just two more skilling outfits to eventually buy. Uh, and now that my cash stack is really good, I kind of remember how much GP buyers ultimately give. Uh, I'm going to be super comfortable buying those outfits. Seeing as prayer and construction are two of these skills that I still need to get up for quest cape, I thought I'd go ahead and do all five of my god statues. And that is the first time that I can actually do the fifth one, which is nice. And there's my goal of 80 prayer complete. I think I'm just, yeah, one level off of within the light. Okay, it's the light within. I always get them confused. All right, there's my first proper hour of virus done since I've unlocked Prif and, you know, my mage level's going up quite fast. Uh, but I don't have Rumetrix Pro. But here's one thing that anyone can do if they want to check their, uh, you know, XP per hour. Just set a goal, like 200k prayer XP. And hey, turns out I got about 123,700 in uh, my 57 minutes, so more or less an hour. Yeah, and I did the same for fire making just to check my XP rate. I cannot believe it. I think I have had like 20 or 30 of these encounters by now. It's supposed to be a flat 1 in 10. Finally got my first piece. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, well, there's... Another piece on, I think, this is the next Lumberjack uh, event that I've run into. Yeah, I'm just going to go with the idea that this was bugged and they secretly hotfixed it in today's patch. And there we finally have it. Now we can just grind out the rest of these guys' levels. Full Lumberjack set. Very nice. Well, would you look at that? Level 92 Magic. That means I can equip a Stavis Liske. Let me just go pick one of those up. And I will be finishing this up, but I want to go ahead and get this on camera. There's the last two pieces of the Constructor's Outfit acquired. And there is 83 crafting acquired. So with a plus six boost, I could technically get Quest Cape with only 83. The thing is, I want a lot more Harmonic Dust, specifically for training archaeology to... 74 um yeah so i'm gonna just keep coming here on ithal hours for the time being seeing as i'm up to 2400 harmonic dust that means i only have about three more hours here um so i'll probably end up getting the next crafting level or at least very close to it which would mean i only need a plus five boost um that would make things easier on me and that would allow me to get my crystal matic the first of my crystal tools i was doing a bit of uh reading while i'm sitting here harping and it turns out if you go under the lore tab in the achievements, uh, you can click on post quest experience rewards and it will show you a list of rewards that you can claim after quests. Um, yeah, that's incredibly useful. <laughs> and a nice juicy chunk of archaeology XP, 67.2k. Yeah, got me pretty close to 67. Um, there are still quite a few mysteries and things that I can do that'll help me get towards 70, uh, but I still want to be dumping this XP into archaeology. It's just too slow, man. Ending off the day by doing a little bit of woodcutting, I've decided against continuing to harp just to get my crystal hatchet now rather than, you know, a little bit later. It is just like 300k XP. It doesn't take that long. But I thought now is a great time to break out the crimson shins I had stacked up in the bank. Um, it's I mean, it's faster than a dragon hatchet. It's just some free XP, so I figure I may as well. And I thought I'd end day 51 off with this little upgrade that is seed aside. Uh, yeah, I've been harvesting my animals early at adolescent just to really stack up the beans that I have. 
because this is going to be super handy at Vyres. It's going to really clean up some of the clutter that's there, you know, the poison ivy seeds, the belladonna seeds, uh, and give me some farming XP for those, so it'll make my life a little bit easier there. First clip of day 52. I've been spending a lot of time doing various AFK skilling today, and I had a busy work day, so really haven't been able to make any clips yet, but just ended up picking up 88 divination, so I can now boost to 90 with the banner boost instead of having to use uh, spicy stews. In addition to that, I made myself some bracelets of clay so that I can uh, make urns a little bit easier. And something else that I did today was uh, finally finished off my stack of 4,000 harmonic dust. Uh, this is going to be going into my crystal matic as soon as I get level 70 archaeology, so that'll be a nice upgrade to have banked. And with that lap, that is 80 agility taken care of. Okay, I think I made a mistake in my last clip, but there's 80 woodcutting, which is the actual final requirement for the light within the last, you know, hidden requirement being 84 crafting. Starting day 52 off with a nice level, oh, sorry, day 53 off with a nice level 82 fire making for pieces of hate. That is almost the last requirement for quest cape we got just three agility levels to go and just the one crafting level and then the archaeology levels i'll need for the quest that's coming out next week and spent an ithal hour working on harps more picked up 84 crafting there we go so now i can boost for that and i just have uh yeah some agility some archaeology to go i know i'm technically one strength level away but that comes from a quest reward so that is sorted out and there we have it, 84 crafting from this Ithal hour. Something I just remembered is that I can claim this pale lamp from the World Wakes, and that is 250k prayer for free, <laughs> which is really nice. Uh, also, I think if I claim Juna's gift... No, I'm trying to see how to get the 6th Age circuit, because I believe I can access that now. And there it is, also access to the 6th Age circuit, which is a... Pretty strong ring. I mean, 21 strength bonus. Uh, it's better than my Berserker's ring, for sure. Uh, and then I still have this Ancient Lamp, which is, uh, you know, patiently awaiting 75 archaeology. Okay, I ended up getting the boost that I needed in just, uh, yeah, two spicy stews. So there's my Grand, De Grand Defense Potion made. And there is completion of the Light Within, the quest with giant requirements and giant rewards. Look at all of these beautiful lamps, 90k each, and all of these skills. Yeah, nice levels there. Oh, and that also gives us access to the Saren Prayers, which are incredibly useful. I really should use these at some point, but there is my third weekly D&D token stacked up thanks to this week's Traveling Merchant. Or, sorry, today's Traveling Merchant. Considering I think this is probably the most valuable thing you can buy from them, do be sure to not miss out on Traveling Merchant July 2nd to July 4th. Every single day, there's going to be a weekly D&D token three days in a row. That is beautiful to see. And we'll be ending off this one with a bit of archaeology. As everyone knows by now, archaeology is my last thing for Quest Cape for the upcoming quest. Uh, yeah. I looked at my clip folder, and it is even bigger than it was for the last video. The last video that happened to be 50 minutes. So, one, I got some cleaning to do, and two, I better wrap this thing up before it gets too much longer. So, thanks for watching, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.